Hi there, welcome back to Empowerment Nursing. This is Ashley, one of your on-call professors. And I'm posting this video today because I got an awesome question from one of the awesome students who are studying with us right now. And I thought it was important to address um, not only in nursing school, but when you're writing your registration exam, how using the process of elimination is so key to your success, okay? So even after you've studied and you're solid in your content knowledge, you still have to be smart about how you answer questions. We've published a number of videos on different strategies for answering questions, but not one specifically about using the process of elimination. So I thought that this question was a great example of that and I would um, share it with you all. So, um, in our textbook, just to kind of preface what I'm going to talk about, we do have a complete respiratory chapter that goes over chest tubes, um, all of the parts of a chest tube, and then um, an entire page of troubleshooting chest tubes and what to do when. So I'm very confident in all of those who study with us and their ability to answer chest tube related questions because it's solid. All of the information's there. We use a balloon to teach um, and deepen the understanding of chest tubes, their purpose, how they work, et cetera, et cetera. So I am 100% confident in my graduates who use our program's approach to answering questions around chest tubes, yet this question still came up. So I thought it was great to share. So here's the question and work through this with me. While the nurse is transporting the patient, the patient's chest tube drainage system falls off of the bed and the chest tube, tube becomes dislodged from the chest wall. What is the nurse's priority action? Okay, so you're transporting the patient to another unit or to a diagnostic test, whatever it may be. The chest tube falls over and dislodges itself from the chest wall. So now this has become an open sucking chest wound, okay? What is the priority action? Priority questions are high level questions. This means, what are you going to do? You can only choose one thing. If you're only gonna do one thing, what's it gonna be? Here's the options. A, apply oxygen at 4% and transport the patient quickly. B, activate the hospital emergency response system. C, check the patient's respiratory effort pattern, apply oxygen. D, firmly cover the insertion site with the palm of a clean gloved hand. Now, here's where it gets tricky. One of the biggest take homes in our teaching specifically and in a lot of NCLEX prep course teaching um, for chest tubes is that you never ever tape down a chest tube on four sides. Why? You have to have a way for the air to escape, but for air to not continue to enter. If you tape down a chest wound on all four sides, you will cause a tension pneumothorax, which is a, an even bigger issue than having a sucking chest wound um, and can lead to even bigger problems. So when you enter into this question with knowing that solid content, you never tape down a chest wound on four sides. Knowing that solid content, if you don't use the process of elimination and some critical thinking is going to get you the wrong answer. Let me show you why. A, apply oxygen at 4% and transfer the patient quickly. B, activate the hospital emergency response. C, check the patient's respiratory pattern and effort apply oxygen. D, firmly cover the insertion site with the palm of a clean gloved hand. It comes down to this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a, apply oxygen at 4% and transport quickly. You're leaving the chest wound open. Air is entering the pleural space it's going to push the lung and the lung is going to collapse. B, activate the hospital emergency response system. That means you're going to do nothing. That means you are going to take no action whatsoever. Incorrect. C, which a lot of students would choose. Check the patient's respiratory pattern effort and apply oxygen. So you're like, that sounds good because I'm assessing, um, I'm keeping a watchful eye on the patient, I'm putting oxygen on the patient. So that sounds good, but that chest wound is still wide open and sucking air into the pleural space and is going to collapse the lung. So all of the work that that entire um, chest tube drainage system has done is being undone by that chest wound remaining open. The only possible answer here is D, firmly cover the insertion site with the palm of a clean gloved hand. Why? When you use the process of elimination, D is the only option that stops air from entering the chest cavity. And that is the whole goal of having a chest tube, 
okay, is getting the air or the blood or whatever is in that chest cavity out um, to allow the lung to re-expand. So D is literally the only option that will stop air from entering the pleural space and collapsing the lung. Even though if you have that solid rationale of you never tape a chest tube down on four sides, technically um, putting your hand, your clean gloved hand over the surface of that will still allow for air to escape, but it's more importantly going to stop air from entering, okay? And it's a brief moment in time. So I thought this was a really, really great demonstration of how, yes, you have the content knowledge, you have the solid principles, but you still have to implement process of elimination and critical thinking in selecting your response. Because the principles, if they're not applied correctly, um, can lead you to the wrong answer. So I thank the student from sh for sharing this awesome question with me. Um, it really led me to think of how important it is to look at all of the answers, not jump to a conclusion in terms of what your response will be, but know, okay, stop before you choose and think a chest tube, what's the purpose of it? The purpose of it is to evacuate air or blood or um, whatever it might be, exudate out of the pleural space to allow the lung to re-expand. One way exit of that. It's not going back in. If it's allowed to go back in, that defeats the purpose. Okay. So ask yourself before you look at the answers, what do I know about a chest tube? What do I know about the safety around a chest tube? What do I know about troubleshooting a chest tube? Okay. And then take the options one by one, applying oxygen at 4% and transporting quickly. That just doesn't even sound like it would be a good transport quickly to like define that. Activate hospital emergency response. That's like, I'm going to do nothing. Um, C is an, is an answer that a lot of students would gravitate towards. Checking the respiratory pattern and effort, applying oxygen. But D, if you use critical thinking and elimination, D is the only option that stops air from entering into the pleural space, which will cause the lung to collapse. So despite knowing we don't tape down on four sides, D is the right answer. Because in this situation with the options provided to you, it is the best choice. So never forget in answering questions, it's not always what you would in your own words term as the perfect choice. But when you're presented with options that are less good, it becomes the best choice of the four possible options you're given. And that is very, very important to remember. You're not looking necessarily for the perfectly worded, perfect choice. You're looking for what is the best option out of the four choices you are provided with. And using the process of elimination is a great way to get you there. So stay tuned to our channel, subscribe um, to our YouTube channel, Empowerment Nursing. Join us on Facebook, N-Powerment, and click slash CPNRE Test Prep. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at For Empowerment. Um, for more nursing tricks, tips, and advice for your incredible success. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.